Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Frontline Network's Company of Heroes 2 World Championship. We've seen a bunch of great series tonight, and if you're only just joining us, we are now going to be heading into Game 2 of our series between Symbiosis and Barton. They are playing on Moscow Outskirts Summer, and they are currently in their in their, they're in their they're in the second game. We've seen Symbiosis take one game with his Russians, some great M3 usage right there. And, uh, well, now it's time to see whether he's got something out of his sleeve to pull out as the Germans. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Symbiosis is actually going to be countering Barton's Germans, because I have seen him play, I've seen some of the replays that he has posted, both as Germans and Soviets. I actually think that he feels more confident with the Germans, so as he's going to be taking on the Soviets right now, I'm not sure if his, his hands are shaking a little bit, you know. I need to, I need to drag this out, I need to take one game away from Symbiosis by winning this so I can go to a deciding match. Otherwise, it's over. Otherwise, I'm out of this tournament. No prize money for me. I gotta advance to day three. So, this is a quarterfinal match between Symbiosis and Barton. So, whoever actually advances, advances to tomorrow to play in the semi-finals. And in the semi-finals, we had the first person to actually go through being aim strong. So, whoever goes through in this game goes to a semi and then eventually this person who wins will then go and play a final potentially against Aimstrong. So if Aimstrong wins his semis he's gonna go to the finals and then he might eventually meet one of these two players here if they go to the finals. So it's going to be interesting to see. They have everything to fight for. They do indeed. It's a lot of money on the line. One thousand dollars right there for your top prize, and then you got uh, what, what, what's the second prize? It's uh, two hundred dollars for a second and a hundred dollars for the third place. Yep. So there's we a lot of money on the line. We wanted to give a massive first place prize. This was our intention to make people really, really fight for that first place, not just be content by being number two getting 25 to 35 percent depending on what system you use we just threw that all in the garbage can it's just like no no we'll just do our own thing we don't really care about what's conventional and whatever you know we wanted a big first prize money pool and we we got it we got it eventually we we rustled up the cash so we do have a lot of competition so far and i think it's about time that we jump into this game and see what these players can bring to us now in this second game here on Moscow Outskirts. I'm ready and I will be taking a look in on Barton's Soviets while you will be following Symbiosis Axis, I believe? Yes. So let's count down go. from the five second mark and two, three, two, one, unpause. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we do have Barton moving out with his initial combat engineer. He's going to go and focus on the left-hand side of the map. So he's going to go for this munitions point first, I believe, and then maybe try and get his first conscript squad out on the field to go grab that cutoff, and then try to nab the fuel on the left-hand side of this map. Symbiosis went for a single Pioneer opening, built his tier 1 straight away, and is now building himself a Grenadier. So no double pios for Symbiosis. Yeah, it's it's really hard to tell if it's good to get that additional pioneer. As I said in the previous game, I feel like they have a fighting chance against the combat engineers right now. So I feel that there's a window to actually use double pio opening. But I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. It um, uh, requires a bit of more experimenting, I believe. And we actually had Ura used by the initial Conscript squad from Barton. Interesting. Get on the field faster, Interesting. I guess. Get on the field faster, get to the VP faster, get those VPs. He wants uh, to faction choice when it goes to a game three, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to push it to a game three as much as possible, because obviously he is one game down already. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, considering VPs is quite a large factor in tournament games, especially if it goes to a game 3, you get to decide what faction you want to play as. So it's a big deal. So he wants to start to drain early on Symbiosis, and he has already. Uh, he's at 500, and he's gotten the center VP. He's nabbing the left-hand side VP as well, while Symbiosis is basically just capping normal strategic points to get more resources in so he can keep teching and not be out-teched by the Soviet player. Yeah, it's interesting. Barton is really focused on these uh, on these VPs straight away, ignoring uh, largely 
uh, resources like munitions and fuel and going straight for the jugular and putting on that VP pressure right away. Not going to be able to stay in control of the center VP for long, however. That said, being on the VP pressure, of course, we've casted so many Symbiosis games and we know he is no stranger to early VP pressure and just early pressure in general because he deals with pressure all the time. That's what he does best. He does. He functions best when his opponent thinks that he's won the game within the first five minutes because then it just makes it easier to come back and crush them. Yeah, he's always very good at preserving manpower, for example, and just, just taking, 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 adding another layer to his army, and then all of a sudden his opponent finds himself out teched and outgunned, and then they need new counters, and they don't have the resources enough because they've been taking so many manpower casualties during the game when Symbiosis do very early retreats and just denies that so he can keep teching faster. Well, so far, Symbiosis, he's just sort of extending down into the middle, not going after either fuel. He's letting Barton have both of them, or theoretically letting Barton have both of them. Barton hasn't actually capped the right-hand side. In fact, Barton hasn't capped an awful lot himself. He's really gone aggressively for these VPs, and so has sort of left the resources to one side. All VPs for Barton this game. He wants choice in a potential game three if he wins this matchup between Symbiosis and Barton on Moscow Outskirts Summer version. And he's gotten his fourth conscript and he's actually going to go for a little bit of a conscript span, expanding it with another conscript. So totaling up at five now. Interesting choice. Meanwhile, from Symbiosis, we've got a build consisting of two Grenadiers and two uh, two MGs. Two MGs, two Grenadiers, and he's teched Tier 1. So, well, he's teched uh, for Level 1, so he can start building his Tier 2. Yeah, generally, I see a lot. I do it myself as well. Four Tier 1 units, uh, especially if you don't get that initial Pyo, makes you able to build that Tier 2 building quite fast, actually. Symbiosis, he moved up, took a fairly aggressive sort of cutoff point around the uh, around the north, but he's actually being cut off himself. In fact, his entire middle island is now being, it is turning into an island. I mean, he's left stranded now and totally cut off from his base. Now he's got four, five sector, sectors actually in his possession, but all of them, apart from the munition point outside of his base, were actually cut off there due to Barton's very aggressive cutoff move, and he planted a mine at that cutoff just outside of the German base as well, with the Comet engineers that, that actually took the strategic point, so he's uh, it's gonna be a little bit of an annoyance for Symbiosis to get that the, the strategic point left if he accidentally hits that mine with a group of soldiers. Molotovs, Molotovs have been researched, yeah, for Barton. It was his first taking choice. No buildings in the base for Barton right now. Five conscripts. Looking at my screen, I see five conscript icons, and it's, it's that's a lot of conscripts. That's a lot of early game firepower. Interesting that he's not going down the quick scout car route, though, because that has been a very, very prevalent strategy so far in the tournament. But he is choosing not to go down that route. Yeah, I played quite a lot with the scout cars, the M3s for the Soviets, and then I kind of got a little bit bored of it. It's very powerful, and especially if you're on top of your vehicle micro, you can stay away from Faust and things like that, and you're usually able to get out of any sticky situation anywhere, especially if that scout car hits Vet 1 with the overdrive ability, you can get out of anything, basically. But, you know, I've moved over to going for Tier 2. I like Maxim MGs, I like the Soviet AT guns, especially if you go with the doctrine that enables you to actually cloak them as well, the shock rifle frontline tactics, because I still, even with the increase in manpower cost of the shock troops from 360 to 480, you get the PPSHS for free now instead of having to pay 60 munitions for them. But I still really like shock troops, they're very durable. Yeah, shock troops are a lot of fun to use. I mean, we, we saw, if you go and watch our Expert Insight over on our YouTube channel, we did an Expert Insight cast where Aimstrong joined us. Uh, you can find that at youtube.com forward slash the Frontline Network. It was one of the last shoutcasts we did. 
And, uh, well, Aimstrong told us about his love affair with Shock Troops, and we actually saw just how devastating they can be. We saw a Vet 3 Shock Troop take on, like, four Grenadiers single-handedly yeah. and, and <laughs> win. It was, it was a massacre, and it was, it was disgusting. The insane massacre that Vet 3 Shock Troop Squad just would not die. I think they were down to 40% health, but they didn't lose a single man. So they had six PPSHs at all times, firing at, I think it was three Grins and a Pioneer. Four squads of infantry against that one poor Shock Trooper squad, which turned out to be all Terminators. Yeah, it was totally nuts. We have now uh, an Axis Sniper on the field. That's a unit we haven't yet seen. I've seen Symbiosis' streams and he really likes this Axis Sniper, the rapid firing rifle from that Sniper is really good and Symbiosis really likes using them. It fires much faster than the Soviet Sniper, that's the difference. It's only one man, but they do have a faster rate of fire, so uh, it's, they're different. They're not the same like they were in Vico where they were very similar, apart from veterancy basically. Well, that Grenadier squad was saved by the backstop MG. And now here comes a half track upgrading to Flamers. Oh. I remember for that is something we've seen quite a lot of, however. Oh, nice blocking there with the Flamers. He forces the short troops to hit the dirt. They're going to pay for that though in a second when that Flamer kicks in on the Flamen Water. Now he did get the 18 nade off, but he decides to retreat after delivering that damage and then from the 18 nade on the half track. He's not going to be able to stick around, and he, I, I most likely he thought, you know. Either the sniper's gonna pick me off and I can't move because I'm in hit the dirt mode or that fla that half track will upgrade to a flammable and it did so a wise choice from Barton getting out of that sticky situation uh, it could have been devastating it sh he most likely would have lost his entire conscript squad because it's fairly damaged and down to four men Symbiosis is now beginning to expand out of his little corner here very defensible little corner, same little corner that Barton went to. So yeah. maybe this is maybe this is something for you players out there in the chat to actually take note of. Both players have gone to this sort of area over here on the left hand side. So maybe this is where you want to base yourself in your own auto match games. Yeah, you want to be, you know, controlling, have a nice fortification when you're playing as the Germans, and maybe this corner is good. Flamen Werfer like. into the middle now. We're going to see how much damage this thing can do. Whoa, it hits a mine though. That was a well-placed mine. Does more than half health. Yeah, Barton has been placing a few mines here and there when he's had the munitions and had the time. So not a bad choice for Barton using some of that munitions to actually produce mines all over the field. And that you can, as you saw with the Flamen Werfer hitting, that's going to pay off. It's going to take him out of commission for a while. He's going to get repaired up once again. Tier 2 was completed in Barton's base, but he actually decided to go straight into Tier 3. So he's not going to be building any AT guns, for example. Most likely going to go for maybe a T-70. I have seen one teller mine in the center where that Flamen Werfer is getting repaired just next to it. There's one teller mine, so that thing could be game-breaking. If it's a fast T-70 out Ooh. from Barton now, and he hits the teller mine, that basically takes out the T-70 in one go. First Opal Blitz truck has been called in by Symbiosis. He has gone down the uh, the Blitz and uh, and Strafe and Tiger doctrine. Assault support doctrine chosen, yeah. Opal Blitz, and you get the artillery officer. Why doesn't anybody use that guy? I want to see that guy. The guy with the Luger. You know the officer from Vico. That Luger, until it got nerfed, was awesome. Oh, it was great, hit. wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> one hit Allied everything. Snipers. Just like crits, crits, crits. <laughs> I like that Luger. Just a guy with a pistol. He's just running around like Rambo, not getting betting, not getting killed by enemy snipers. It took three shots to kill an officer in Vico, and I, I want to see the officer back. And it's actually in Company of Heroes 2 as an artillery officer. It's basically three grants and an officer, but nobody ever uses it. Oh, we see a conscript. Was that a conscript? Conscript yes. squad goes down. He's down to four now. That was painful. That flammable warfare. It's not being used super aggressively. He's just sort of going out and hunting down the back cappers and uh, taking them out like that, but it works but well. It, 
Yeah, it's symbiosis. He uses it like he uses the M3. He picks his targets, picks his battles where he can solo out one infantry squad with his flammenwerfer. That's his prime target. He's not gonna throw it into some massive engagement somewhere where there's so many units around that's gonna to be able to kill it, you know, so fast that they can't even re react. Even if his micro is excellent, he's not going to be able to get out of a situation where like four conscripts, an AT gun or, an, or, a, or a vehicle, a T-70 or a T-34 is there, you know, Flammenwerfer is going to go down. Flammenwerfer into the right hand side here. He knows there is no real AT over here. Just a single combat engineer with a flamer. Not going to do anything. We do actually have another new somewhat doctrine choice from Barton. He actually went ahead and actually got the conscript support tactics. It also has hit the dirt as we've seen in the previous doctrine choices from a lot of the Soviet players. But instead it actually has a conscript repair kit. Conscript Assault Package, Rapid Conscription, and Incendiary Artillery. And the Rapid Conscription thing, I, we, I think, I believe we casted a game with Barton when he used the the German version, where you get the... Uh, oh, oh, you get the, the, the German infantry. Yeah. The Osttruppen replacement, yeah. Here comes the T-34 now, and that half track is almost sitting on his own teller mine. Don't sit on your own mines. It's always scary. T-34 is going to make quite an impact now, I think, because there is just a single pack for anti-tank uh, on Symbiosis side. He does have, and actually, I was clicking on it to see, he has a single Panzer Grenadier squad, which is now upgrading to double Shreks. Yeah, it's a reaction from Symbiosis. He sees a T-34, knows he has one pack on the field. He's got one teller, as far as I know, unless he's planted some more on the left or right-hand side of the map. But in the center, there's just the one teller that I can see. It's not going to be enough against one T-34, he needs something else. And he doesn't have tier 3 up, so he can't build, you know, basically the standard counter to T-34s I see nowadays. He's building a P-4 because it will win outright in almost every engagement. At least when it's in a vacuum against one T-34 and no support versus a P-4 with no support. The P-4 is going to emerge victorious almost all the time. Sniper from Symbiosis now sitting on 11 kills, moving back into the center here. Really enjoy. You can really see Symbiosis basically adopting his Vico Sniper Micro into Company of Heroes 2. Keeping the flammenwerfer at maximum range. Yeah, that sniper just Aid. keeps on plugging away and plugging away. Doesn't want that 18 aid. There's now another little light tank out from Barton. He's going for the T-70 with the uh, with the top commander. Yeah, he actually uses the combat the the, the ability on the tank which disables the main gun and gives you more line of sight, so he can snipe with this T-34 now. I'm just checking in the fog of war, and that T-70 can see a long, long way with those binoculars on that tank commander. That's pretty handy there. Very handy indeed. Flammenwerfer, he's done his business over on the on the left. He's now heading over to the far left to deal with a conscript squad that's over here. Oh, he's too close to that conscript squad, however. An 18 aid. No 18 aid is actually thrown. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, here it goes. Yep. There's the 18 aid on that there flammenwerfer. We go. Nets him. Bet 2 from taking some damage, and he's also been dealing quite a lot of damage, but there's actually nothing over there. Both the T-70 and the T-34 is on the right, so the Flammenwerfer most likely going to be able to reverse out of that situation. I can feel Barton, he wants to send in that T-34, but equally he knows that if he does, he's in for a world of hurt. There's all kinds of AT now out. He's got a double Shrek Panzergrenadier, a pack, it's a lot of stuff for a single T-34 to handle. Molotovs goes into a building on the left-hand side at that VP, and that actually repels that Gren squad, and that Flammerwerfer is still unrepaired. We do have a Pyo squad and a Shrek up P Gren coming up from Symbiosis, and he's going to go ahead and reinforce from the half-track. These Pyos are sent over. I'm not exactly sure. They're going to go in the building, maybe? Nope. Stalker strafe run available. 
Stereo line run of sight. has been up, unlocked from the uh, assault support doctrine. Yeah, we actually had superior line of sight from Barton in the center. So with the conscripts in the building and that T70 commander looking oh, around I in binoculars. I some sniper rage. Hoorah used to try and hunt down a sniper. They run straight into a Flammenwerfer and lose five out of six men for their troubles. And the second conscript squad with PPS HS are forced off also by... Symbiosis is putting one of his Grens garrison in our building and he's going to be able to get that VP and stop the drain because Barton is actually on 424 VPs and Symbiosis has already been drained down to 285. Oh, Symbiosis has tier 3 up already. Why didn't he you does, <laughs> and he got, he got a stug. He built a stug out of it. And he's, I don't know what he's going to use to shoot at. I guess it, I guess it was a counter to the T-34, but which has just kind of been chilling out. Here comes a big infantry push now. we got conscripts coming, and they found a pack, which doesn't really have that much immediate support. It's trapped by a hedge. Unfortunately, the pack cannot vault. The pack is decrewed, could even be stolen by this conscript squad. It's T-34 versus Stug Battle outside of the German base. The Soviet AT gun has been moving up, but the T-34 gets taken out. The AT gun is trying to face the right direction, but it is too little, too late, and that Stug is going to reverse out of here. We do have an incendiary artillery brush used on something. There it goes. It's going to be on the back. Wow, that's a lot of stuff burning there. The Axis Sniper is found out. He manages to find some cover to cloak in. Oh, little T-70 is very lucky and actually the Shrek from the Pigram squad misses the T-70 as it reverses away on the road. At the same time, we have a mortar out now from Barton as well. So he is getting some use out of his tier 2 building. He's got an AT gun and one mortar out now. Yep, so it wasn't just a total leapfrog to, uh, to tech up. It was a deliberate choice, which gives him a few nice options. Grants are forced off from the top left of the map by this T-70, which is still alive, hasn't gotten a single kill yet, done a little bit of health damage to some random infantry squads, and we have a new T-34 out as well. A new T-34, wow, okay. So it might be time for Symbiosis to think about investing in the new Stug of his own. Uh, his stug uh, was getting repaired, but he's now getting going back up onto the front lines here, trying to help his flammer. But where is the pack? The pack is not facing the right direction. Oh, there we go. He gets one shot off, and the T-34 is trying to polish off that flammer. Flammer for raise. T-34 is going to pay with his life, Whoa. but at least the flammer is dead. I don't know. Is that worth it? T-34 no. for a flammer? I don't think so. I mean, it probably gives him peace of mind. It's probably good stress relief, but I don't know how economical it was. Ooh, Sniper actually manages to retreat away from that incendiary barrage, but I'm not sure. MGD crude, you know, Conscripts would hit the dirt behind heavy cover as well. And the Stug is forced off as well. All of the backup is forced back into the German base. And the pack was decrewed as well, so that's what was possible to steal. What the fuck is this? Uh, this is a strafing run. Oh, strafing run. He's, he could actually, he might be uh, using the strafing run to keep uh, Barton off his support weapons. Not a terrible idea actually, now when I think about it, because there are plenty of conscripts around, they're all hitting the dirt, so they can't actually move, but he could cancel that ability because they've been laying on the ground for a while and actually go and nick those German support weapons, and that would be a nice victory for Barton. Here he comes again, but it's not actually doing that much. I think I have just found the counter to the German Doctrine Assault Support, which gives that straight big Hit run. the dirt! Hit the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Saves all your troops, I me. Mean, if you look at that true, any unit that's caught without being in hit the dirt mode will get suppressed. But for those that are in the dirt, you can see it all took almost no damage. Now the T-70 on the left hand side trying to force off this MG, but Symbiosis is not having none of that. He exits the building, packs up the gun and runs away. Bastards are trying to flank us! 
Symbiosis did drain Barton below 400 VPs, but Barton is not going to reclaim the left hand side VP. And we do have a Pequen squad moving on into the center that Mortar is going to pack up and retreat. But AT Gun needs to watch out for those Shreks. He needs to back away, yeah. AT Guns tend to be fairly susceptible to Shrek fire. Yeah, same thing happens in Competitive Heroes 2, obviously Shrek's blowing up the AT guns, and it's the same thing in Competitive Heroes 2, the Shrek's can really do a number of those AT guns. If, if they, they decide to hit anything. <laughs> yeah. They're not having a fun time right now, and that Pikmin squad is actually forced off, I'm not exactly sure why he would actually retreat it that easy before trying to get another pot shot in, with the stag now moving back onto the field. I think it's just symbiosis and his cautious nature. Yeah, he is all about denying kills for his opponent, denying the manpower drain on himself. Another Axis Sniper, interesting. Two Axis Snipers? Yes. Now the original is actually sitting on 26 kills, that is not bad at all. Yeah, I don't know, what do you think about that Tommy? Double Snipers? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know, he's not facing guards or shock troops yet. So no. It does seem like a bit of a strange choice. I mean, he's facing just a lot of conscripts, and they're fairly cheap to reinforce. So, I don't know. Maybe what, what do you he... think? Maybe it's a hit the dirt counter. Could be. Could be a hit the dirt counter. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Worth thinking about. Maybe Symbiosis is onto something right here. All I know is those double snipers are going to turn those conscripts into Swiss cheese if they don't do something about it quickly. Here comes the T-34, he's gonna try and polish off one of the snipers. Oh! Oh, he goes down. Bye bye, double sniper for Symbiosis. Did not survive for very long at all. I think he got two kills, baby. Well, at least the Vet 2 sniper survived with 29 kills now. Still racking yeah. up. Veteran Hans is still alive. Ooh, more tier 3 action from Symbiosis, I see. He has opted to go for a P4 to complement his Stug, so I guess he feels not too threatened by the sight of Soviet tanks. He is instead going to get himself a medium tank like a P4 and use that to tango with the uh, with the Soviet medium armor. Yeah, the P4 should be able to take out the T34 and the T70, and it's not going to be able to circle strafe him as easy it is to circle strafe something like a Stug, for example. Barton is going in for the attack again with his two vet two conscript squad, but they need to retreat because they're very low men, two and three men. They pack up and run away. Soviet AT gun was de -crewed. There's a second one out now, however, from Barton, and his army is growing. Another T-34 in production. He's really pumping out his T-34s. Real Soviet-style um, uh, conveyor belt of T-34s. Yeah, mass production at his finest. Symbiosis is now going to try and destroy this Soviet field gun, get rid of it for good, and there we go. Yeah, if you can't steal it, at least destroy it, wouldn't you say so? Oh yes, oh god yes. I would. I mean, you know, it was Seb who told us back in our very first ever Expert Insight episode, always steal, always steal, never, never kill, always steal if you can. But if you can't steal it for whatever reason, maybe you've only got three man squads around, then killing is always preferable, because at least then you've denied it to your opponent. Yeah, exactly. Now if you look at the VPs, it's actually Symbiosis he finds himself on the back foot. He's being bled slowly, he's down to 250 VPs sitting on yeah, just a single actually, VP himself, so... He's actually losing on VP, so that's a problem for him, because he is focusing heavily on the center. But, uh, you know... And the center is home to only a single VP, and actually he could lose this right-hand side VP soon, so it might be a triple cap for Symbiosis. Yeah, he's gonna lose the right-hand side VP, and Barton is basically sitting pretty in the center right now, with all of his support weapons there and his tanks guarding that middle VP as well. He did get drained out to 384, so I'm not exactly sure now who's gonna have choice for a potential game 3, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Right now it's looking like Barton might be the winner of this one. 
It could well be the case. Here comes another straight from Symbiosis. Let's see if he can use the planes to turn things around into his favor. Oh, here comes that straight plane. Takes out plenty of infantry on his second pass there. Mainly AT gun crew members not having a fun time. The P4 moves up on the left hand side. We do have a flanking Vet 2 country squad. The P4 is kind of getting stuck on some scenery, but he's going to get AT naded. But there's not that much to actually follow up. A T34 is going to go in for the hunt, I think. He does have the infantry support. Two conscript squad there. At the same time, combat engineer versus. These Pequens with Shrek's on the left hand side VP, but they just don't have the anti infantry capabilities to get anything out of a building oh. without this bundle NATO. Yeah, I did the job. That was plenty of health gone. And the T70 fights the dust. Barton now losing the center, but he has recapped the whole right hand side and there's nothing over there from Symbiosis to stop him at all and he's just going to keep on adding more sectors into his possession and his his income right now looks very strong. He's got a 52 munitions income and a 39 fuel income for Barton. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of resources, a heck of a lot more than what Symbiosis is getting, sitting on just plus 21 munitions and plus 13 fuel. Uh, I think it's a bit lucky for Symbiosis that he managed to get those two tier 3 tanks out onto the field when he did. Oh, artillery has been placed on the Axis Sniper, that's got to be getting on Barton's nerves now. The first Sniper did die, but he does have oh. a replacement. Yeah, Symbiosis knows what he wants. He wants a sniper. He likes the sniper. He has excellent sniper micro. So, I don't blame him for doing that. Oh! Oh, <laughs> nearly took a direct hit. That would have been an, uh, an unfortunate way to lose it. But look at the map now. Barton owns almost the entire map. Symbiosis is now down to 165. It feels like only a minute ago he was sitting on 250. He's now down almost 100 more. He's definitely in a bad spot right now. Yeah, Symbiosis is in a very confident map position right now. He's got basically all the sectors that he could ever need. And he's got such a healthy income that he could start producing whatever he feels like. And it's going to be another AT gun, actually. He has lost two of them, I think, that were destroyed, but he still has one remaining on the field and a second one hitting now as well. He's going to be in a very, very solid position soon. I don't know what Symbiosis needs to do to break out of this. He's sort of trapped on both sides now into this little sort of central island he's got going here. He's got a good hold on the middle VP, but one VP isn't going to win you a game. Now, if your opponent has two and you only have one, the drain will just continue until you lose the game. And Symbiosis just went below 150, down to 148 VPs right now. So he needs to turn this around. He needs to expand over to the left or the right just to nab the VPs at least. Here comes another Soviet AT gun from Barton opening up on this P4 here. b Grants might be looking to actually throw a bundle nade, but they decide against it that there are two conscripts backing up the two AT guns. That's a retreat before he starts dropping that juicy Shrek to his opponent. Oh, P. Grand in danger of going down here to hit the dirt conscripts. He even takes a full force hit from the T-34, but survives. Oh, is that AT gun artillery barrage used by Barton on the pack, actually? If he get rid of that, his T-34s will have a little bit more of a window. Oh, but the pack actually manages to back away quickly enough without getting decrewed. Very low health, though. That's actually a Vet 3 conscript right there from Barton. Not two. That's painful. Oh, wow, what's this in the base? It's a T-34 in the base. He's just come to chill out. See what's going on here. He's crushing so many units. Oh my goodness. They're all just jumping under his treads. Oh, Barton, you cheeky person, you. We do have another P4 out now. It's gonna be Axis armor dominance soon as this T34 with a damaged engine that got fausted 
is still under attack from these shreked up pedrans in Symbiosis' base. And at Bet 3, they're doing quite a lot of damage with their shreks. Enemy Panzer has opened up! Bet 2 Stug with those sexy side skirts. I love seeing them. And look at that summer skin as well from Symbiosis. It looks nice. Isn't Loving it? it looks that. very nice. Well, Anti 34 that went for a little base mission got taken out, and now Symbiosis has got quite the armored uh, armada. A little division there rolling around. Two P4s backed up by a Stug guarding the center now. He's gonna go over to the left hand side with his double P4, so that's easily gonna force out those poor combat engineers, which have been sitting in the, that busted building for almost the entire middle part of this game. Let's see if a couple of tanks don't do a good job of flushing them out. Yeah, he just needs to retreat. He's got no other choice and he's most oh likely going to be taken out on retreat. Oh There's yes. two P4s and a Gref. Goodbye, combat engineer. Every time Symbiosis leaves the center though, he loses the center VP again. So the P4s are going to have to run left and right all the entire game basically to try and defend two VPs because he's almost down. Dropping down below 100 BP soon. What do you think? Do you think that, uh, you know, Barton has taken some casualties? Sebastian's so army is looking quite healthy right now. He's got a nice, diverse army. At the same time, 100 BPs can go very quickly if you're not in control the entire match. Yeah, I think even for Symbiosis, now is the time to start uh, making a strong, strong, concerted effort to get those VPs back. And whoa, Incendiary Barrage oh! melts the sniper almost he died instantly. So he I don't he even was see his corpse. He went from from naught to sixty. He went from full health to zero in a split second. I don't even know where the corpse went. It's just gone. It's just a, a piece. A rubble of ash, basically. It, it, it was there. It's it's still there, in fact. He's curled oh. up in a little ball. But, uh, uh, that guy's gonna be hurting now. Oh, yes. God, yes. Plenty of AT guns out from Barton right now. He's gonna add another conscript to his army. I'm not exactly sure about the choice, but at the same time, not having the tier 4 building up, he can't really combat these P4s with T34s, especially not with backup from Bet 3 Pedrins and packs. No, he cannot. But with enough AT support, enough AT guns, maybe he can. Here comes another German strafe plane doing some good damage to these. Six man crews on the AT guns. Yeah, that straight plane from the support assault support doctrine is real good. The JU 87D plane is basically just mincing everything with his machine guns. Barton now actually getting pressured quite a bit. Got some grenadiers going up into the middle, some more combat uh, pioneers coming up to back them up. There's some nice MG creeping as well, which is suppressing these uh, Bet 3 conscripts, keeping them muted. The Biosis needs time, he needs to buy time. He's down to 86 VPs, he just needs to keep Barton away from the VPs as long as possible. He is in control of the left hand side with an MG guarding there, and he has two very mobile P4s. None of them have anything like a damage engine, for example, so he can go left and right whenever he pleases. Uh, I don't know, it's looking like Symbiosis might be rolling up for a comeback here. I think he might be, you know, he is gearing up, he is taking more and more territory and Barton seems to be falling back at every turn. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Barton right here, I'm not exactly sure if it was just basically the manpower drain that just became too much for him, or maybe it's his taking choice in the initial when he built his tier 3 building, you know, the T-70 did some work, a lot of scouting done at least with that commander looking in down his binoculars to spot the enemy troops and the t 34 coming into the flank and crushing stuff in the base, etc. But since then, when Symbiosis was finally able to start feeling tier 3 units, the Stugs and the P-4s, the T-34s became obsolete. 
Yeah, and since then we haven't really seen too much of them. They, uh, oh, what's, what's that he built? He built... He's gonna, he's gonna oh, try he's going again. for another T-34. He's gonna yep. try again. If at first you don't succeed. <laughs> Throw more stuff into the brick wall and eventually the brick wall will fall. But you need a lot of T-34s to break down a P-4 brick wall. Yes. Oh. Whoa. Well, his fifth conscript that he rebuilt went down. Down to four conscripts yet again. He's losing a lot of conscripts now. And he's actually... Symbiosis has put on a triple cap against Bun. Well, as long as he can stop the drain, he's down to 86. A triple cap or not doesn't really matter. He just needs to stop it unless Symbiosis wants to lose this matchup. And I can tell for sure that he wants to go ahead and go into the semi-finals of TFN's Competitive Heroes 2 World Championship. Yep, he wants a shot at winning that cash. He's not going to give it up lightly. We actually went and seeded Symbiosis, which you're seeing playing Axis right now, as the number one seed from what we have seen from replays in 2v2 matches and 1v1 matches as well, and on his stream. But basically what we did for, I think, what do you say, Tommy, the top eight people, we basically just juggle in there, and it's just like, these guys are, we think these are the top eight. It's like, give them one to eight, you just click random. <laughs> That's gotta be good. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it's so tough to see. seeding these guys when we were doing it this morning because, you know, we, we don't have that much information to go off. There isn't, there certainly haven't been any retail tournaments yet. This is the first one. We have a lot of beta tournaments to go off, but even then, not so many that we can definitively say one person is better than another. But hopefully, with the sheer number of players we've had participating in this tournament, it'll give us a really good idea for the future of where players sit. But I think we were well justified in giving Symbiosis that number one spot because it looks like he is actually turning this game around and actually pulling it back from the brink at 86 VPs. He's pulling uh, this one will, back. He will go ahead and lose that right-hand side VP. But these P4s, they're doing some real legwork now for Symbiosis. They're so mobile, they're going all over the place. He's, oh god, these conscripts, they can, they can hear the P4s coming and they just retreat before they even take a shot. Yeah. An Oswind has been purchased now. That's an interesting unit to get. Not something you see very often. I wonder if that's a counter specifically for the T70. Might be to try and counter this harassing T70 that actually managed to take out one of the Opal Blitz trucks from Symbiosis. He actually purchased a second one and that thing is still alive just outside of the Axis base, but yeah, I don't know. Postwin is at least giving chase to this T70. But it's also good because, you know, Barton has been playing very conscript heavy. Oh boy, look at this Oswin melting this T70. Yeah, no problem. Very lightly armored light tank. No problem whatsoever. Oh, nice bundle nade. Nice bundle nade. Takes out a T70, bundle nades the conscripts, and this Oswind is doing a lot of damage. Incinerator Barrage at MG in the middle, and I believe that Symbiosis is not seeing that until it's too late. It already hit the MG, the crew members are slowly burning to death. They actually managed to stand on the only patch of ground that wasn't burning. T-34 found an Oswind here on the left-hand side. This could be a nice little win for Bart if he can finish off this Oswind. That said, the Oswind did its job. It found the T-70 and killed it. Yeah, got rid of the conscripts as well, so Symbiosis is going to be able to regain that VP. Oh, you know, uh, he's not going to be able to kill the Oswind. That's got to be a painful thing to back away from. Well, it's most likely a better choice to back away than get shot up by this Stug now moving out from Symbiosis on the left-hand side. At the same time, the P4s on the right-hand side getting repaired by two Pioneer Squad. But there is an AT gun and a T-34 over there. Moving up as well. Got lots of T-34s out now. Three T-34s out from Barton. All in different locations. He's spreading them all out. Doesn't want to get them all caught out by this tag team of double P-4s. Which are currently in the back just repairing. Oh, oh, 
Yeah, those pe those two peoples are basically MVP for me in this game. I gotta say, they're they're oh, team absolutely, up there. Yeah. They take on everything. That's long, oh, lucky no, straight plane. Oh, here comes the JU87. He's gonna take another turn at this AT gun and he it. Down it goes. Nice potential destroy for Symbiosis. There it goes. He does decide to take it out as he couldn't steal it with a three man Pioneer squad. He would have lost it. Yeah, if you can take it, if you really, really can take it, I guess it is better to destroy it than to just leave it on the ground. What I see a lot on stream from newer players or even older players that just haven't been playing so actively in Company of Heroes 1 or 2, for example, is that they mostly leave these heavy weapons just to just to just leave them on the ground and then their opponent comes back and just recruits them. Just if you can't take them, if you don't plan to take them, at least if you had the possibility to do so, destroy all of these support weapons. Oh, you don't yes. want to give it back. Make your opponent basically pay out of the nose to get a, a brand new AT gun instead of just recruiting it with cheap conscripts. Oh, nice. Rifle Nade gives a Grand Escort Vet 3 here. I'm not seeing any any LMGs on Symbiosis Grims. Uh, you would be right, although he only has a single Grand Air Squad. But even on uh, that one Grand Air Squad, he doesn't have an LMG, no. I guess he doesn't like that upgrade because I've heard from certain players that, you know, the go to thing for my Grims get an LMG as fast as possible. You know, unless I'm going for the Flammenwerfer, my first initial 60 munitions is going to go in an LMG. That's just going to, you know, tip the tide over to my side versus the conscripts in the early game. Uh, it's interesting. Some people like it, some people don't, I guess. Well, what did he spend his early munitions on? Because he didn't get it for an LMG, he, he, and he didn't lay a minefield. Dude, I also so... got a Flammenwerfer. Ah, that's right. He saved up for a Flammenwerfer. Yeah, that's usually what I do as well. I'm trying my best on the stream. I know some people uh, watching this stream right now. Almost up to 800 viewers, Whoa. by the way. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Uh, a nice ram there. Stug was rammed by T-34. Now there's a second one coming onto the flank here. Going to be able to take it out from behind. I think that Stug has actually destroyed engine or immobilized. It's unable to move. Or moving very slowly. He should be able to move away, but it's not that quick after getting a ram, I guess. I don't think it's heavy wear. No, it's not just normal engine damage. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. He's just trying to phase the frontal armor. The T-34 does go down, though. Whoa! Where did he come from? Whoa, Tiger is just... Oh, I got the round. oh no! The Tiger is taken out of action before he's even had a chance to engage in this fight. And now, is Barton going to be able to turn this around? He's gimped the, uh, the Stug there. It no longer has a gun. He's gimped the Tiger, and now he's got two free T-34s to plug away at these tanks. Just basically trying to surge in with all of his armor against the Axis armor, but where are the P forces? Oh, in this the P forces have arrived as support. There's another ram, and there's an. Oh no! The oh, second he got, he got blocked he got by the tiger. The tiger saved that other P four from getting rammed there, and oh no, that's gonna leave one P four and just a lot of gimped T thirty fours. One of them forced to get abandoned was destroyed. And the other one is destroyed in its entirety. We are left with a lot of destroyed vehicles and one abandoned T-34. I hope to see uh, Symbiosis take that and turn it against Barton. Yeah, and also to note, not a single vehicular casualty for the Germans in that battle, even though basically everything got rammed. Everything got rammed, yeah, but those T-34s, just... they just didn't do enough damage. That Stug took shot after shot after shot and still never died. Yeah, bit 2 basically gives it an HP buff. It's a reduction in damage, but literally that just means you can take more, more of a beating, so technically it's like having more HP. Oh, and all the while, look at the map, it's all blue for me. Yeah, I mean, Barton is down to a single base sector, he's down to just a few infantry squads. 
and now he's coming for the base rush. He's got a Tiger, an Oswin, and a P4 all in fighting shape. And that's actually game over. Barton is going to throw in the towel right there. He has had enough. He has that had was enough. a great comeback from Symbiosis, I have to say. A great comeback indeed. Uh, very nicely played. Very good German victory, I have to say. I'm not exactly sure what, what, what actually saved him in that game because it looked very bad in the initial stages when he was kind of caught in that corner. And he was just sitting there trying to get that one VP in the center to slow down the drain, but he couldn't afford actually extending out on the left or the right-hand side to stop the drain. So eventually he was actually down to 53, I think, or something like that, or 60, I can't exactly remember, but... Very close to losing, but he managed to pull it around.